Broken Hill, Australia's last frontier town. Location for the most expensive Australian film ever made. Mad Max 2. Here, production offices, facilities, and personnel are going 24 hours a day, seven days a week, while the location crew prepares a futuristic desert outpost for a special kind of 21st century warfare. The set is a major achievement for producer Byron Kennedy. Probably the most expensive set built in Australia, though. Mm -hmm. It's certainly the biggest. Mm -hmm. When we first arrived here by helicopter and saw it, it was just stunning, staggering. And uh, as a result of that, we started the film very high, very up, because we were just so impressed with what we'd seen the art department had built. The custom-designed automobiles and motorcycles that will clash in the gas-starved, not-too-distant future of Mad Max 2 are the result of months of collaboration between production designers, automotive engineers, science fiction artists, and stunt drivers. In a nightmare vision of tomorrow, this armada will terrorize a decaying civilization. Men behind these modern chariots of war are the stuntmen. Under the command of director George Miller, they prepare to bring the doomsday combat of Mad Max 2 to life before specially prepared shockproof cameras. I hit the buggy that's upside down. The motorbike crashes into it. The rider goes over the top. We cut there. And I come flying along in this crash into the bike and into the buggy and then into the ditch. has not gone according to plan. Ask him. Director George Miller, who is trained as a doctor, examines stuntman Guy Norris. His injuries will not permit him to return to the production. Norris was, of course, supposed to land safely in the most reliable and advanced cushion yet devised, a huge mound of empty cardboard boxes. As the crew prepares to move to a new location, stunt director Max Aspen explains what went wrong. It's a very dangerous stunt, and it's a, it's a type of stunt that, that's completely unpredictable. And if you don't leave the bike before the impact, then the bike takes the impact with you, and then your body's got no control. Once you start spinning like that, you can't control. You've got to send yourself through the air and then tuck. But once you start spinning, there's no... No matter how hard the stuntman works to refine his craft, he will never eliminate the element of danger. Already the crew is preparing an even more spectacular stunt. In this shot, Aspen will launch his car from the ramp at 60 miles per hour over a 20-foot pile of wreckage. The ramp must have precisely the correct angle, height, and strength for the car will become a 4,000 pound projectile and Max Aspen will be strapped inside. A dry run establishes the correct approach while the crew sets the final camera angles. When director George Miller is satisfied, he gives the order to roll the cameras. Once again, the stunt is performed sensationally, but something has gone wrong. Aspen's car has clipped the uppermost wreck and crashed. This time, the stunt director himself will pay the price for such dramatic realism. He, too, will be out for the duration of the picture. As the two top stuntmen enjoy the safest ride they've taken in weeks, the production of Mad Max 2 continues. 
in the great Australian outback, one of the world's last frontiers. Filmmakers Byron Kennedy and George Miller are creating the ultimate action adventure and proving that nothing is more exciting or dangerous than the make-believe world of the movies. On the battle-scarred highways of tomorrow's burnt-out world, a hero will make his stand. Mad Max 2. Still out there. 